Hi and welcome back to a new video. Today we can finally talk about the RTX 4090. Well, not in full detail because this is only an unboxing review, unboxing NDA. So today no disassembling of the card, no performance numbers, but I, I think there are still some interesting things we can talk about, about the Founders Edition and also the Gigabyte Aorus Master, which I have on my table. But first, because this is only an unboxing, that's it. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye. All jokes aside, even though I would have loved to just upload the video this way, just doing a plain unboxing video to me is typically very boring and that's why usually I just don't agree to them. I also openly told Nvidia that I'm not going to do an unboxing video, but here we are. And that's mainly because I also received the Aros Master, which is a bit more interesting regarding some of the marketing details and there is at least something we can talk about. I also want to point to a video that Steve from Gamers Nexus did about two weeks ago and he was complaining about some of the marketing that's going on with the 4090 cards, a lot of very weird naming schemes, very weird, I, I would call it bullshit marketing things that's, that are going on and that's also a good transition to the Founders Edition and because from my opinion, that's the one thing that NVIDIA is doing right and doing very well. It's pretty much the same as the 3090 Ti, just looking at the raw dimensions. It's pretty much exactly the same. So there are almost no changes. Also from the design, also almost no changes. And I'm a big fan of that because this is, if you look at the entire market, one of the only cards that kind of reflect a very mature design. And you can feel as a customer that you get a mature product. Because sometimes if I look at some of the other products from the other vendors, it feels like they think we are 12 years old. And a card like this is more than a thousand dollars and certainly a 12 year old will not buy this. So I personally expect to get a product that is targeted towards an audience that's mature. And that's what I don't feel with a lot of the other vendors. And that's what you can also see in Steve's video. Going back to the Founders Edition, one of the biggest changes, at least according to NVIDIA, is that they increased the airflow by about 15% over the 3090. They claim that they did some small adjustments to the heatsink design, to maybe the fin density, maybe how close the fins are sitting next to each other. But personally, if you just look at the fan, they also increased the fan size. Previously, it was about 108 millimeters in diameter, and this is 115. And if you simply calculate how much more area the 150 millimeter fan provides, that is like 13%, close to 15%, and that's maybe where you get the 15% more airflow from. I'm not quite sure if it really took a lot of effort to yeah, replace a 108 millimeter fan to 115 millimeter. But that's about it with the changes from the 3090 to the 4090. But personally, huge fan of this design. I really love this. But going back to Gigabyte and what I earlier also called a bit like bullshit marketing. Because if you check out the Aros Master, they are highly advertising the Wind Force Bionic Shark fans. Gigabyte states that the Shark fan increases the static pressure by up to 30% while reducing noise level by up to 3 decibel at the same time compared to regular fans. And now if you do a bit of research on the Bionic Shark thing, you will find that this technology has been existing for like 50 years. It's also almost common knowledge that meanwhile like Lufthansa is wrapping planes in Shark foil. So there is this nanostructured foil, which is called like AeroShark. They are basically wrapping entire airplanes in foils like that to decrease the surface resistance, just for not better airflow, but to have less resistance during the flight of an airplane, for example. And for an airplane, the decrease is about 1%. If you read up on some wind turbines, they achieve improvements by about 3 to 5% at best. And that's for having this like wrapped in the entire surface. Now, if you check the fans of the Gigabyte card, I'm not even quite sure if they can really make use of this, which is called ripplet effect. But if we zoom in on an image that is highly magnified to check out what this AeroShark foil is actually doing, you will see that it's just straight lines and very sharp lines to decrease the turbulent flow and increase laminar flow. If we now go over to the Gigabyte foil that is basically presenting what this is about or what it's supposed to do, it just makes no sense because you can see those arrows which are 
kind of indicating a higher turbulent flow, which then again just wouldn't make any kind of sense. I'm not quite sure if this would help at all and certainly it would not help 30%, maybe 3% at best. But then again, because this has the like halo effect, it has those fans that are spinning and you have an LED at the end, so you can create the halo effect which you already had like on 20 series cards of Gigabyte. It's nicely looking, I'm not going to complain about it, but if you have on one of the fins like an LED band underneath, that is definitely going to disturb your airflow. And if the shark thing is going to improve it by 3%, this is probably going to kill 3% again. So yeah, from my perspective, that's just pure bullshit marketing. And certainly you will not get 30% more static pressure just by adding a bit of those tiny bumps on the card. This is just one example of what's going on with a lot of the 40 series cards. There's a lot of very strange marketing around them. And that's what I just personally don't like. And that's why I personally like the Founders Edition, just because this is a very mature and very serious product. That's why I like it a bit more. One thing that's different to the previous Founders Editions, that's the way you can disassemble the card, even though we cannot show it. But if you just look from the side, there is this tiny notch right here. And if you enter with a screwdriver from the front, you can take off the backplate and it's held down by magnets, which is a very elegant way. It's not glued, it's not screwed, so it's very easy and very nice to disassemble the backplate. Very well done. Same goes for this plate right here. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to remove it. That's why I just leave it on. And also this one is held by magnets. So that's a very, very neat design. Apart from that, as I said before, just looks pretty elegant. What I'm not quite sure about still is about the 12 volt high power connector. There is this adapter that also comes with the 4090. And even though some PSUs now natively support this connector, I guess that about 99% will have to use or are going to use this connector with four times eight pins to supply up to 600 watts to the card. Nvidia also claims that it has some active circuit on here. I'm not quite sure what kind of active circuit means. It could also just be a voltage that's fed to the connector part right here, to the like sense part. Not sure what kind of yeah active circuit this means. You can probably just cut it open. But yeah, you can see that on this additional four pin connector up here, there are some wires exiting on the bottom. I simply just cut away the tape on top so we can see where those cables are going. We can see four cables in total and my personal guess is that they just go to the connectors and then because if you pull this down you can see those wires just, just go to the connector which means they probably just go to ground and then basically if you attach your cable from your PSU and it will go to ground it can also bridge this one to ground. It's just an additional yeah, ground connection and this way it can detect how many or if a plug is connected or not. This is, I don't know. <laughs> Why are there two unused cables in here? That is pretty strange. But it also reminds me of this cable that I received from Corsair. You can see on here, it's only using two pins out of the four. So kind of makes sense that the other pins are also not connected on the NVIDIA cable. This should be exactly the same. We can see two wires exiting from the additional like sense pins. And if you check on the connector, they are just bridged to ground. So it's just a pure ground connection on the cable. And what I personally find a bit entertaining is that this is going to give you the same with basically two times eight pin. And for the other one, you need four times eight pin. Going back to the Gigabyte card, one reason why I would expect this to perform quite well is just if you look at the pure size compared to the 4090 Founders Edition, it's just insane. It's insane how much of a cooler you have on the Auros Master, how much surface area you have, how many fins. You have 13 heat pipes if you count them. You can see them a little bit from above. If you spin the fan, you can see it a little bit. And those heat sinks are connected to the vapor chamber which is sitting underneath. So that should be quite fun. Overclocking and also cooling with this card. And as I said before, because you have the halo effect on the card, that means you have this LED at the end of the blade. You can see that underneath this blade, there are some cables going to the LED. And just going back to the shark fin design, 
Like if you do some kind of surface optimization that give you probably one digit optimizations and then you add a wire on the fan, pretty sure that does not add up. Pretty sure the wire also has some influence on like turbulence and airflow, so probably just it won't help at all. The Auros Master also comes with a small LCD on site, which allows to display all kind of information like temperature, power consumption, all things like that. That's also a feature that you could already find on previous master cards. One more thing we have to talk about. Well, first of all, the screen cooling is still there. That means that basically the third fan that is sitting underneath can easily just blow all the way through the card. That will definitely help cooling. So that's a very good thing to have. The backplate is something we should talk about quickly. It will give additional mechanical stability to the card, but what's a bit odd is that, especially in front, you have this huge like folded or like bent part of the backplate that will give a lot of stability. Like bending the card here will be almost impossible. Same goes to the back. There's a tiny bend on the side, it will def which will definitely also give this part a lot more stability. But then again, in the center, there's like no bend in the sheet whatsoever, which basically makes this area the weakest point of the card. And that's almost like at the edge of the GPU. I wish they would have added more bends on the side to give this even more stability. So that's definitely something they could have improved further. Now reached the end of this quick video. Next week we can fortunately then talk about the cards more in detail and then it really makes sense to do a more detailed video about this card and also about the Founders Edition. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Bye bye.